Let's have a look at a simple and intuitive data structure, priority search trees. So why are we looking at priority search trees? Our motivation is the following. We've done orthogonal range searching and normally we search with a rectangle. Now, if one side you could say is at infinity, as in the examples that you've seen here, so we have one, one, two, three sides, but the fourth side is open, then we can still just handle it like an orthogonal range query, but we can actually get a better data structure for the setting. So that's the question here. For three-sided range queries, can we solve those more efficiently than four-sided range queries? Our motivation here was for the windowing data structure where we have these three-sided queries when we were querying with this uh, vertical segment where we had to find all points, all endpoints of horizontal segments in this three-sided query. Okay, and for these types of queries, we can use a very simple data structure, and that is a priority search tree. So what a priority search tree is, is essentially the combination of a heap and a binary search tree. Okay, so just as a reminder, what is a heap? A heap is a nearly complete binary tree with the heap property here, the min heap property, meaning that a node is always, the key of a node is smaller or equal to the key of its children. Now, if you think of the 1D version of three-sided queries, so let's say a one-dimensional range query, which is one-sided in the sense that I want to find, let's say, all numbers that are smaller or equal than 4. Yeah, this I can solve with a heap, or more precisely with a min heap. In the following way, I simply start at the root. If that is smaller or equal 4, I report it and recursively go to the subtrees. So I see then here the 2, I report it, go to do the subtrees. I see the 3, report it, go to the subtrees, Okay, so here's just a 9, I can stop. 12 is also larger than 4, I can stop. Here's a 7, it's larger than 4, so I can also stop here. This is, now Now I'm done with the recursion on the left tree. I go to the right tree. The 4 is um, smaller equal 4, so I go there. This one should also be gray. I visit that, see that it's larger than 4. I visit the 6, I see that it's larger than 4, and I'm done. Okay, so for a 1D one-sided query, I can use a heap. Now we want to do 2D three-sided queries, and for the other dimension, I use a binary, or I use this heap as a binary tree in the following way. If I have a point set, like here my point set, what I'm going to do, I'm going to store two pieces of information at the root. One is I'm going to store the point with the smallest x-coordinate. So this way, if I have a three-sided query, I will see that point first. So I'm storing the point with the smallest x-coordinate. And then for the remaining points, I find the median with regard to the y-coordinate. So let's say that is here, and then store that at this node and recurse. So now in this subtree here, in the right subtree, I'm going to store all points that are above the median. In the left subtree, I'm going to store all points that are below the median, excluding my point P min, because that point at this point I've already handled. And with this, we can very easily now do our query. So this is how this could look like. So leftmost point P1 is stored here. Then recursively I have a tree above, a tree below. If you look at the tree below, below the leftmost point is P2. So that is the root of the next tree. And here we have the median. So that splits the points 
below this line according to the y coordinate at the median. If you look at the points above, the leftmost point, if so, P1 is already here, so the leftmost point of the remaining points is P4. So I'm going to store P4 here and then again split at the median y coordinate. If I now have a three sided range query and it has to point to the left, then I can do the following. Essentially, I'm doing what I described with the heap, kind of my one sided query. And additionally, with a binary search tree, I'm doing a 1D range query on the y coordinates. Now, remember how does a 1D range query work? So a 1D range query, I first had to find the split node. So here the split node, P1 is already the split node um, in our example. And then I find this lower boundary. I find that in my binary search tree. So now I'm looking at Y. So the lower boundary is uh, below this median. It's above that median. And let's say we are below here again. Likewise, the top boundary is above this median here, above the next median, like this. So that's my 1D range query on where I'm querying with this interval here, you could say, with this interval in the Y range. And now what I just need to do is within that range, I need to find the points that are to the left of this boundary. And I can do this, okay, I will have these two paths that I need to check. And then I just go into the trees inside. So here I just have this tree inside and that tree inside. And there I just go deep enough so that I know that as soon as I see a point that is to the right here, I can stop. Okay, let's do this by example. I start here at P1. I will go left and right for my Y uh, range query. P2, um, I go to P2. Um, now I go, I see this median is below my boundary, so I go here. And then let's say I go here. This is my lower boundary in, in my 1D range. And then I start exploring also the trees inside, which is in this case P10. So note that what is happening here. I mean, I could have seen that P7 is already too far on this side. But in terms of the algorithm, what I'm actually doing, I find this lower path for this, and then I go into all of the subtrees. Uh, so that means I also go into the subtree here. And also this path here, I follow to the end. So that's why I'm also going here. You could save a little bit here, but this keeps the algorithm simpler. And okay, now I do the same on the other side. I go to P4, P6, P11. So that's kind of the path in my 1D range query. And then I need to go into the subtrees. So I go into the subtree with P5. P5 is still to the left. So that means I have to also go to the children, P8 and P13. So if now there would be more nodes back here because P8 is already to the right, I could have stopped. Okay, and of all the nodes that I explored, I check whether they're inside or not. And in this case, these black nodes, those are inside, the gray nodes are outside, but I checked them and the white nodes I never visited. So once more, how does this look like in pseudocode? I'm querying my tree with a three-sided range. I first do a 1D range query searching for the lower and the upper boundary of my range. Again, in a 1D range tree, essentially I have one path until I hit the split node and then it will diverge. And what I do along those search path is the following. So if I have trees in between, so I have, I'm going, so you have to think over the now from looking from here. So if I go right, I need to look at on the lower path, I have to go into the left subtree. And on the upper path, if I go left, I go to the right subtree. And then I need to report whatever is in that subtree. 
or more precisely whatever is in that subtree which is to the left of the right boundary of my range. So in terms of these black and gray and white nodes, as we've seen them for range querying, this will look, look like this. I first do the search for the upper and lower boundary in my one-dimensional range tree for the y-coordinates. So I get this path here and this path here. I'm in this way visiting log n order log n nodes. And then in between, I go into the subtrees and call report in subtree. And then report in subtree. There I really just know, use my heap or, or my priority search tree as a heap as we've previously seen. So that means if I see something that I report, I need to recurse. But if I see something that I don't want to report, I can stop. And in this way, I can make sure that the number of gray nodes in the subtrees is bounded by two times the number of black nodes. I, can, I will stop on every gray node has a black parent. So in terms of a charging argument, I charge two, at most two gray nodes to a black node. And that's how I get this inequality. And once more, how does a report in subtree work? That simply does the following. I check whether the x coordinate of the point that I um, that's in that subtree, whether that is smaller or equal my query x coordinate of the right boundary. I at this point know that if it's in terms of x fine, then it's also in terms of the y coordinates in my range. So then I report the point and then I also recursively go into the subtrees. And if the point is on the wrong side, I will simply stop. I already argued gray nodes uh, are bound by two times the number of black nodes. This subroutine will overall take order, essentially order k time. I here write one plus k because even if there's nothing to report, uh, this will take constant time. So order one plus k means at least constant, but beyond that order k. I visit on the search path, so on this path and that path, log n nodes. On each node, I spend constant time. Outside of those search paths, nothing is visited. And then within the subtrees inside, I spend order one plus number of nodes reported time. So this one, I do at most log n time. So this overall will give me a log n. And this will sum to the number of points reported overall. So the total query time is order log n plus k. To sum up, with a priority search tree on a set of n points, um, I can answer queries, three state sided range queries in order log n plus k time. And the storage will be linear because I simply, this is simply a heap or a binary search tree. Um, both simply use linear storage and I can construct all of this in order n log n time. I mean, you just need to find the point with the smallest x coordinate. You can do that in linear time. Find the median. You can do that in linear time and then recurse. So the recursion, so just to check the running time, the recursion for the running time, this is a standard uh, recurrence that you've already seen many times uh, for merge sort and, and whatever, which solves to order n log n. Fantastic. So if I'm using this for querying a vertical line segment, so I'm using this in the following way. I have an interval tree and then as associated data structure, a uh, priority search tree. What is the storage requirement and what is the query time of this structure? Is it, and now we have four options, linear storage uh, order log n plus k queries, or is it linear storage log squared n plus k queries, n log n storage log n plus k uh, queries, n log n storage, log squared n plus k storage. And again, this is not just a priority search tree, but it's an interval tree with priority search trees as associated data structures. 
So we now only need linear storage because my priority search trees take linear space. So I have lots of these priority search trees, but overall they store two endpoints and each of them has linear storage in terms of the number of points stored. So overall I get linear storage. The query time is not faster than before because we still go through log n nodes and then in each node we have log, uh, query time of log n plus k. So that gives me, or ki for the number of reported points at that node. So that gives me overall order log squared n plus k query time. So that's what we have for the query problem of given n horizontal line segments. I want to query with a vertical line segment. Linear storage log squared n plus k query time. This will not help us with the uh, um, overall storage of what we need for the windowing queries because for the windowing queries we also still need these range trees for the segments that are completely within our uh, query um, window. So that means overall we will still need order n log n space because of the range trees that we use there but at least this other part we were able to improve. So far what we've seen is with horizontal and vertical segments um, and then the query is a axis line rectangle. Now what we want to do next is arbitrary non-intersecting segments and query with a, a, a axis aligned query window and find the segments that intersect that window.